Okay. The teddy bear is all finished. And so I'm gonna show you how all of the... That's not English. Hello, my name is Sarah. I wanted to bring you along on this journey where I am recreating my childhood teddy bear. I've had this for as long as I can remember. I'm hoping to recreate this in time, including the embroidery and the lace. So I started to try and recreate it a couple months ago. Okay, six months ago, it was December. And this was my first attempt. I've never really made toys before that are not crochet. So it was a bit of an experience. And rather than being smart and trying to find a pattern to follow, I decided to try and draft it off the original one. I went through and penciled out something and then set about to sewing them together. It took a couple of days to put it all together. I am hand sewing it just because it is a little bit fiddly and that can be difficult to get in with the sewing machine, but also because I can work on it from bed. The pinks were a little bit unfortunate. It turned out a little bit like naked mole rat. Um, I then went through and drafted up a second version, once again, just using printer paper. And this time I went through and I measured specifically against the original on those areas where I could tell that things weren't quite right, whether it wasn't wide enough, wasn't small enough, um, focusing largely on the head. And that's where I ended up with this monstrosity. So this one's much chunkier, which was in part because of the change to the pattern, but also because I stuffed with fabric. This has fabric all through the body rather than just stuffing. The head and arms and such are stuffed with, fat, with normal polyfill stuffing, so they are normally squishy. But the rest of it turned out well. The arms are a little bit high, which is why it's got a very scrunched up little grumpy man look. Those arms, when I'm placing them, will need to be tweaked a little bit. I don't have any coloured bear eyes, so I tried embroidering some, but unfortunately because of this fabric, it did get really lost. On the next one, I'm going to make sure the fabric is a little less busy. The little boy that this is going to be made for is a huge fan of dinosaurs, um, and I found this really cute fabric. The dinosaurs also go in different directions, so it's not going to be too much of a problem once I'm sewing it together on making sure that it's right way up and such, because I will always get that mixed up. And then for the contrasting colour, I got some nice dark blue, um, which has a slight tealy kind of vibe to it. And so that's going to be on the bottom of the feet, on the hands, the ears. I'm going to take a little bit of a break here and I'll show you how the paper pattern is all looking. I'm probably going to use the same as the third one, um, but I've already made some changes to the head shape to improve that because it did turn out quite wide in the end now that I'm looking at it. Okay, so what we have here is my sewing diary in which I started documenting each of the projects that I've made over the last few years. Well, over the last year, really. Just trying to keep note of the fabric used, the techniques used, things that I can improve for future. And I've already kind of sat down on this next attempt to figure out the head shape a little bit better. Um, so I cut out in a very cheap mock-up fabric. I then pinned it against the head and found that, yeah, it's it's not what I want off the original. As much as some of the measurements seem to work, it is a little bit wonky. So then I cut out a bigger version going an extra half an inch wider. And that way I was then able to kind of draft against the side of the bear's head. And I've ended up with this, which I've done a little cut there because there is a small dart on the side of the head, but I really don't know how to make that work without it getting pointy. And so you're able to see that the general shape is the same, but some of the edges just by bringing this in that little bit out of that curve, by bringing this up and over, bringing that nose up that little bit rather than being this very sharp angle. Um, and then even and this is where I got a little bit rough, but even along here, I've kind of changed some of the shape that's going along down the bottom. So yeah, that's what I'm going to use as my pattern for this time around. I also expect that when I go to do the arms and the legs, I may do them a little bit smaller because they ended up quite chunky. The only other area that I'm really worried about is the body ended up very squared off. So I may end up 
rounding these out just a little bit more i have folded the fabric in half so i've got right sides together because most of the pieces are times two the body pieces are times four so i've got the two and two and i've just gone around each with a pencil directly onto the fabric because it's on the inside and it's just a toy so i'm really not too fussed so i've got all the pieces that are going to be in this kind of fabric the only one that I haven't mapped out yet is the middle of the head because that is a times one and that will just be put through on this edge piece once I've folded it out flat again. These pieces do not include seam allowance so when I'm cutting them out I'm going to add an extra centimetre or so um, so you can see I've spaced them out pretty well. This one is a little bit close but whatever. And then what I'll do is then retrace the same onto the other pieces and I'll use these lines to help me map out when I'm sewing the pieces together. I tried to map a little bit so that some of the dinosaur faces and such came onto it, but I don't know what's happening on the other side anyway, so there's not much point. I think the general vibe of dinosaurs is coming across anyway. So I'll start cutting these out. I've got my rotary blade, but I might just use scissors as it's a little bit easier when sitting in bed. And of course, there are four times legs because there's one on the outside and one on the inside. I always forget because the arms on the other hand have this little half arm that combines with the contrast hand and then there's the outer arm which does that. While the legs, I do need four. So don't be like me. It even has written on it times four. I've just made it fit there which is unfortunate because I was hoping I could just send the middle of the head up through there so it just means that when I go to cut that out it's not going to be as nice of a plain fit on this one section and I probably could have done a little bit better but oh well. Okay now let's continue pinning so that I can cut them out so that they're not too wonky. So I now have everything cut out. I've got the main pieces kind of just pinned together loosely so that I have an idea on like, ah oh yes, this is each of the steps that need to happen. The head kind of is the last thing that I always do because it is fiddly and it's worthwhile getting back in the rhythm of sewing before starting that one. This should have taken 45 minutes and instead it's probably been an hour and a half. Actually, I started preparing for this at lunchtime, so it's been four hours. But I got there. Everything's cut out and tomorrow I'm just gonna sit and sew and see how it all turns out. So I've got the pieces all cut out. I've got my scissors and miscellaneous other tools, all of the fabrics that I've been using and my little scraps cabbage box. It was overflowing. And then I made that, which is actually two snakes on either side of the door. Check out my blog for details. <laughs> I went from the bed being absolutely covered to that's it. And now that this is all cut out, these will actually go back on their shelf. 
out of the way um, and they can go back on its shelf as well so yeah um, this is just how I saw my safety button eyes I've got one per size and then the cottons which yeah I should probably use one a bit more matching to those but I like using weird colored thread on my projects it makes it easier for me time to go play some stardew with my mate and see you guys tomorrow okay so it's been a week since I've worked on this because I started getting a whole lot better and I did a whole lot of things for a week maybe it's been two weeks I'm not too sure but I'm back in bed for a whole lot of different reasons and I've started putting it together I've only done a couple of things so far tonight because I'm really slow going but I've got the hand sewn together and now I'm sewing the arm and I've done the ears so one of them I haven't turned inside out yet then the other one has been and prepared so it can be sewn onto the head later. I kind of make it up as I go along. Generally it's a back stitch or a running back stitch along the lines. Um, but I've been taking to do a bit of, I think it's blanket stitch, where I just loop the thread over on the ends to act as a bit of a anti-fraying. Um, because otherwise I am finding that in particular the blue fabric is spraying a lot. It is now the day before. Yes, it is now the day before the little boy's birthday that I'm making this for, but we are in lockdown. I wouldn't have an easy way to get it to him anyway, so it'll get there once it's finished. Probably arrange some kind of drop off for him and go from there, but in the meanwhile I'm going to putter away at this and see where we get to. As before, I've got, well, my dinner, but all of my sewing stuff is just on this stable table, which is quite easy to rearrange. Whatever I'm working on at a time is going on here. And then I've got my scraps and my little embroidery basket, but most of everything going on is here. And I'm just going to make my way through this. And otherwise, I am watching Leverage on Amazon Prime, which is fantastic. Except Amazon Prime is trash for including captions on any show, in my experience. So... Um, and I was hoping that I'd actually get to watch the new Leverage, but I'm in Australia, so we don't get the new Leverage because we don't get IMDb TV, even though that's an Amazon Prime thing. So hopefully we get it in a little while, but I am not holding my breath either. I think that was everything now. I'm gonna keep puttering away at this. I'll check in in a little bit when I've got a few more of the pieces done, show you how it's all going. I'd like to iron it just to set the seams as I work through, but I probably won't because that's just a whole lot more standing and hot things that I'm not really up to at the moment. Um, and for something like this, I don't think that it's going to matter too much. I've got my handy dandy thimble. If you're ever doing hand sewing, definitely recommend getting a thimble, getting one that fits. That definitely made my life a whole lot easier once I did that and then wear it all the time until it's comfortable and normal and that it starts feeling weird if you're not wearing one and using a needle. It's to the point that when I'm doing crochet stuff and needing to sew it feels strange for me to use the yarn needle without it even though the yarn needle you don't quite need it in the same way. I'm going to do a little bit more of this. I don't think today I'm going to be up to doing any recording of the process for you. Maybe tomorrow or whenever I next do this I'll get some of that. See you again soon. Hello, so it is the next day. I am actually working on the teddy again after only one day, so I'm proud. Today I'm actually in my lounge room, which probably looks quite different and strange to a normal lounge room. We recently sold our couch and instead just have our massive bean bag. And so I'm set up on the floor with some cushions and various pillows and whatever else. But I once again have my little tray of goodies, so I finished off this morning the foot so that was nice and fussy and fiddly um, so I now have both arms the ears and one leg complete and then I'm going to do the other leg and then onto the body so I'm going to try and set up so that I can show some amount of sewing my voice is still not the greatest and potentially you're hearing construction sounds and the like but that's just how it is in my area at the moment, even though everyone is in lockdown and only essential work is going on, essential work includes construction, so I'm very much over that, but that's just what we have to deal with here. 
Oh, and also, this is why I've got such bright, lovely light on my face today. The weather is dismal, but we have massive windows in our lounge room. So in winter, we get nice morning sunlight in because this is north facing. So the sun is low enough because southern hemisphere that all of the light comes in here. But in summer, the sun's too high and we don't get any sunlight in here and it's even better because Australian sun is too much. I now have both of the legs, both of the arms and the ears done. Next will be the body and then the last bit will be the head and face because that's annoying. Not as annoying as the feet, those are infuriating and I need to probably just look up a tutorial on the best way to do that kind of foot, but oh well. Um, so this is how the feet are all going now. I recorded a little bit just before now to show those off and we've got the le one leg turned inside out to show how that looks and then I inst turned one of the arms inside out. The angle of the hand is still a little bit funky but I'm fine with that and yeah so continuing to watch leverage and just chill and sit on the floor because it's a different space than I'm normally in and that feels nice right now when I'm having to be in the one place all the time so yeah the weather is continuing to be miserable and overcast and dreary but at least it gives you a bit more of a consistent lighting plus that okay see you again soon Today is a much brighter and warmer day, which is going to be really nice when chilling here. So we're on to the next day. Off camera I have completed the body and I have started on the head. So I'm going to work on those a little bit more and then I'll share where I'm up to. It is all blue sky even if the camera is kind of washing it out. I've now got my stuffing on hand because we are not far off. Today I am watching Kate play GTA roleplay on the NoPixel server. So I've now sewn the body onto the head all the way around so that's all nice and secure and in a moment I'm going to pull all of this through this hole and hope that that actually works out. But I've gone over and I've made sure that all of the seams have now got at least some level of reinforcement and on the neck in particular I actually went through around twice to make sure that the base seam was nice and secure and as straight as I could make it. I think I did get a little bit off course a few times but we'll see. That was a lot easier than I expected it to be to be honest. But I now have the teddy all turned right side out. Um, this is the hole that once I've finished stuffing it uh, I will sew closed and then we will start attaching everything. I will need to attach the safety button eyes before this is fully stuffed because otherwise trying to get the back in place will be too difficult. I'll do some light stuffing of the head just so that I can see the shape and figure out where I want to place the eyes. I'm very excited because this really is the home stretch. There's not a whole lot left of sewing to do other than the holes closed and attaching the ears. Okay we are on to the next day and most likely the final day of this make. Took a bit more futzing than I had planned, um, but it is all stuffed now. But essentially what I ended up finding was the head was fine when I stuffed it. That all came into shape quite nicely. When I stuffed the body though, it all seemed to be going well, except when the shaping of this bottom section came together, it actually bulged quite badly. So you can still see a bit of a bulge going on down through here, but it was quite a lot more. And when it was from the front, once I would have attached the legs, it would have um, been a little inappropriate. So I went through and I realized essentially what had happened was each of these pieces were cut at more than a 90 degree angle. And once you end up with more than 90 degrees on each side, well, there's too much fabric. So it's going to 
fluctuate out. So this section is too wide compared to how this section is. Um, so what I've done is on the side seams rather than the front seams, I made that an even shallower cut um, and just seams that in even more, which was interesting because I didn't want to unstuff the head, but I did remove all of the stuffing from the body and just drag it out through the side. Um, I've restuffed it now. It is still a little bit bulgy, but I think that's fine because over time the stuffy is going to squish down and be less. Um... But he's all stuffed now and I've just put a pin in place to hold that closed and I'll go through and sew up the side. I'm actually going to sew it up loosely and then do the actual seam properly and that way if the outer seam comes undone, there's a reinforced line there because toddler's gone to toddler and small children going to small children. This is looking really cute. I'm really happy with how it's turning out, even with the weird placement of the same print on the front. Um, but I liked that better than having this as the front, because this just is a bit confusing. All right, I have the legs loosely stuffed just so I can check how they're going and if there's anything wrong with the stuffing. I am going to have a go at tidying off the top of here because it's just turned out very square. Um, but the bigger <laughs> important one is actually the bottom of the feet. This one I think is fine, is looking okay. I also need to cut some of the seam on the inside here, just that way this will curve a little bit better. It's currently puckering up because the seam is shorter, if that makes sense. This one I am going to need to potentially replace the foot to be honest, because once I compare it to these, uh, it's turned out a lot smaller. I'm going to recut this piece and unpick it from here and re-sew it on because this length from here to here is more accurate than this length because in theory I was going to just close it up up along here but once I compared it to this foot and they are going to be seen next to each other it would then end up much smaller and the feet would look very different. Okay, let's go. Yeah. All of the blue sky is gone. Oh. Oh, that's hail! Uh, all right. Just gonna move the washing. And then the storm has passed and we are back to all of the sunshine and blue skies as if nothing ever happened. It's fine. Everything is fine. What's going on so far is, as I said, I'm going to cut out a new version of that foot, but I'm also going to embroider it. Yeah, and then once that's done, I'll cut that out. So this is across two pieces of fabric, but this time I'm going to cut it out just a bit bigger to make sure that if there's any fraying on the edges, it'll be okay, because I think that's what went wrong this time is I was trying to correct for some fraying that happened. For the foot itself, sorry for the chaos of this tray, but this is the foot that I've already started correcting. So this is one where the foot itself is fine, but the leg was sitting a little bit funny. So I have clipped in through this inner seam because this is too narrow once you clip it inside out and that's what's causing that foot to kind of bunch up a little bit. And I've also, I'm not sure how well it's going to show up, but I've done a couple passes just to round off this top edge a little bit more so that it's not going to be quite as square. First things first, a little bit of cute embroidery, get that finished off and then I'll deal with the foot from there. Still on my leverage binge, I'm into season three I believe now, got them up hand. Let's have some tea and finish off this embroidery. So now we have this all embroidered and I'm very happy with it. I've got a line stenciled in across the, st the pencil line so that A, the pieces won't move apart too much and also to act as a guide for when I'm sewing this onto the other one. Now to cut it out and start sewing. I've got a bit of the evil villain 
lighting going on because of the reflection, but let's go. Here's where I'm up to. I've been fiddling away at it. I've got both of the legs finished and I've been able to finish off each of the closures. So we're down to the very last of the construction, which is very exciting. And then I get to add ribbons and details and then it'll be done. So we're very close, but it is up to the daunting stage of um, using my doll needle to attach the limbs, which I've done on each of the previous ones, but wasn't particularly successful. But I think I get it a little bit more now and we'll see. And if not, I undo it and try again. All right. So this is where we're up to. The body is all closed up now. The legs are all finished off and all closed. There's no more seams to be done. Um, the foot, so this is the one that I had to replace the foot on. And as you can see, it's much straighter. So if we compare the two, they're much more consistent to each other. Still a little bit different, but close enough. Um, and I got to embroider his name on, which is very cute. And I'm very happy with how that looks. Um, I used a thread to somewhat match to the body, which was DMC 543. And I just did two rows of vine stitch so what's going to happen next is button selection so that i can then join these onto each other this is my random mix of buttons that i own um and i've rated them down to get colors that i can get at least four somewhat consistent buttons but the question is going to come down to whether i want to go with my jumbo buttons or these smaller ones i'm leaning towards the smaller ones because on the original teddy bear that I'm basing all of my sizing off, they are this middle kind of size. I don't quite have buttons that size, but these ones are a bit closer to it than if I compare these jumbo ones, which end up a little too over the top. I'm then tossing up whether or not to do ones with four holes or ones with just two holes. So the way that I'm going to be joining these is doing articulated arms is the term in which you use a doll needle so i got a set of three doll needles a couple of months ago okay probably in december to help me with this as you can see there's quite a dramatic difference in the size of it and when you then compare it to a standard sewing needle they're a bit ridiculous time to stop procrastinating and actually do this and would you look at that we now have a bear rather than just bits and pieces i think i needed to stuff the arms more for them to squish down and out more and that way there would have been more room and less of this shrugging look that's going on but i don't mind too much with that uh, when the arms are put down straight they do stick out quite a lot but oh well i just use my normal thread that i've been using through the rest yeah. of the construction easy, easy um on. but i doubled it over and then fed it through so there were actually four threads at a time when I was sending the needle through and I did end up using the smallest needle and the main reason for that was the larger ones were just too thick and they were leaving too large of a hole in the fabric. We're very close to done, most of the very big scary stuff is over with, joining these is always just a little bit stressful and then I'll be doing ears, nose, maybe a mouth, I'm not sure if I will do a mouth because we've got busyness going on with the print. Okay. Stop procrastinating, let's do the ease. <laughs> so the ears are all attached now, which is great. And I was having to toss up what I want to do about the nose. So on the original one and each of the drafts that I've done, um, it's embroidered. Uh, which is very very cute when it's this kind of fabric and there's other embroideries go along with it but I feel like embroidering the nose on this one would be strange because there's nothing else really to be embroidered other than like this little bit on the foot right. so what I'm thinking of doing instead is using some of the contrast fabric because I do still have some and I actually was able to keep the bit that was the original foot that went wrong um, and what I'm thinking I'm going to do is actually sew that down onto it and just fold the under and stitch that all down. Look how cute he is. I'm at the stage where I'm just seeing mistakes. So I'm having to message the mum of the little boy who's going to receive this and just be like, what do, how do make me like him again? 
So the teddy bear is all finished, so I've come outside for one because it's a beautiful day and I actually want to be outside for once. But also so I can show them off in wonderful natural lighting rather than random lighting that you've been getting throughout the video. And I should probably mute my phone from playing Twitch. <laughs> so yeah, these are the teddy bears and I'll go through and talk about them a little bit. <sighs> Let's go. But this is the first bear. The pink bear is then the first attempt that I had of making a toy at all, but also mocking up based on the original pattern and I just used some fabric fats that I had on hand so they are a little bit thin and it is a bit flimsy and the eyes have ended up a little bit crooked but shh, no one else can tell. Um, then we're on to the floral monstrosity that is really hard to actually see any of the details of the embroidery unless you get nice and close. And the limbs on this one were my first playing around with the doll needles. This is the final bear. This is the one that's going to be gifted to a very special four-year-old that I know who has just had his birthday and unfortunately is in lockdown due to Sydney situation. So I really wanted to get this all finished for him so he has something extra special. And he does look best when sitting like this. This is how the arms tend to fit the best because they are a bit too close together. We've got the cute name embroidered onto his foot. And I sewed the nose in place. The eyes are very simple, they're just the plain black eyes. I realised after I was almost finished that I actually had bought some coloured eyes to try this on, but I kind of like how these ones look as they are. Yeah. I'm so, so happy with this though. Thank you for coming on this journey with me. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you got something from it. And if not, it was a distraction for you as well from whatever's going on. If you have any hints or tips or places that you would suggest that I can check out for hand sewing things, uh, I would really appreciate it. Hopefully the wind isn't too bad. It's gonna be too bad. But I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, my name is Sarah. I am Shiny Crochet normally, but you can now check me out on Shiny Crafting right here on this channel. If you want to see more of my crafting endeavors, then be sure to subscribe, like this video, and drop a comment below of what you think I could try making next, particularly for hand sewing little projects in bed when I'm not up to being up and about. Or when I am feeling a little bit better, what could I be a bit more adventurous on? I'll also share some projects where I am painting. Uh, doing some embroidery and cross stitch. I've been working through a Stardew themed cross stitch for about half a year now to be honest. I think I started that in December and that's been a lot of fun but it became a little bigger than I planned which then made it too daunting so then I stopped working on it but I'm going to get back into that at some point. If you do crochet or you're interested in learning be sure to jump over to my other channel Shiny Crochet. I do post more often on there just because it is a bit bigger and a bit more established. I know what I'm doing over there as well. Tutorials are a bit simpler in my mind. Vlogs are scary in you, so yes. I hope you've enjoyed it. See you around and have a lovely day.